morning, friends. Welcome again to Well Versed. I greet you in the name of Jesus. We're into our little series that we're doing around the Beatitudes, and I want to move on with that today. I'm into Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5, the Beatitude that says, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. So I want to again refer back and say to us, in a sense, here we go again. The teachings of Jesus were always opposite to the world's teachings, and this is never more appropriate than it is in the Beatitudes. The world says, if you want to inherit, get money, get power, get fame, get whatever. And Jesus comes and says, be meek, blessed are the meek. And it's so counterintuitive for us. We want to put ourselves forward. And he simply says, be meek, please. Only the meek. From a worldly perspective, we cannot understand Christ's teachings. The world cannot understand Christians. Because Christian principles are different to worldly principles. And it's not possible for those who belong to the world to be at one with those who belong to Christ. Because it's different values, in a sense. You cannot listen to the Beatitudes with worldly ears. To listen to the Beatitudes with worldly ears makes no sense at all. We have to open our spiritual ears to understand what Jesus is actually saying. The first beatitude about being poor in spirit means to be humble before God. This third beatitude speaks of meekness and it means to be humble before men. So the first beatitude is to be humble before God and the third beatitude is to be humble before men. And I want to suggest that it's even more difficult to be humble before men than it is to be humble before God. When God calls us sinners, we can accept it. But if our neighbor calls us a sinner, that's a different story. And we will retaliate in human terms. Jesus gave an example in Matthew eleven twenty nine. He says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. What a lovely, gentle verse that is. Just take my yoke, learn from me, I'm gentle, and you'll find rest. How good is that? Meekness, I want to suggest, is not a natural human quality. It's a spiritual quality. It comes from the Holy Spirit. In Galatians 5, 25, got lots of little scriptures here this morning. Galatians 5, 25 says, Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Only when we're born again and we receive a new spiritual nature can we possess true meekness. Being born of the Spirit brings meekness. Many people believe that meekness equals weakness. And nothing could be further from the truth. To be truly meek can only come by the Holy Spirit. Having said all this, so how do we become meek? It's all very well to talk about it, but how do we become meek? Well, the first beatitude says to be poor in spirit, human spirit. And then to mourn for unworthiness which was the second beatitude. And then we need to place our faith in Christ. And when we do this, the Holy Spirit enters us and makes us new. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, a new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. And that's what Jesus was on about. Meekness is not weakness. 
its spiritual strength, if you like. There are five signs of meekness. Firstly, someone who is meek does not seek their own right or advantage. Meek does not become offended when we are wronged. And that's easier said than done. It does not care about honor. It doesn't try to defend itself, himself, herself, and make excuses. Meekness is not being offended when we are wronged. Meek never tries to take revenge. Romans 12, 19 says, Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, It is mine to avenge, I will repay. 1 Peter 2, 19-21 For it is commendable if someone bears up under pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. Now it's very easy to read those words. But it's very difficult, I want to suggest, uh, to put them into practice. And one of the things I think we have to do, one of the things that meek people practice is a willingness to learn. A willingness to be open to new things, to things that grow us. Meek people don't always try to get their own way. We do our own thing. We submit to God's will and the will of those around us. That doesn't really work if we do our own thing. We need to submit to God's will and then the will of others. Ephesians 5 verse 21, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. If we interact with one another, if we are meek in the context of our interaction with each other, sensitive, aware, open to the feelings and emotions of other people, there's something reverent about that. And it comes out of our reverence for Christ. And when we do all this, what do we get? We get the earth. We get the earth. What earth? Well, the new earth of the kingdom of God. Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through to 4, and I'm going to read it all to you. Revelation 21, 1 to 4. This is the new earth. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. I want to say to you folks, I battle to read those words without getting a a lump in my throat. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. This is the new earth that is there for the meek. Because Matthew twenty three twelve. just to close this, this is Jesus For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Meekness will never be weakness. It will always, always be a strength that is God-given and God-embraced and God-infused. Is it possible to be gentle and strong? In this context, yes it is. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. May it be so for us. I really encourage you, maybe to replay this, because I've given you all sorts of scripture references here this morning. Maybe just make notes of those references and 
if you've got the time, spend a few minutes looking at them because it's just such a special, such a special verse. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. May God bless you as you go back into your day. And I ask for God's peace and love to go with you. Let's pray a moment. Oh God, you are our source of life. You're our source of love, our source of strength, our source of encouragement, our source of blessing. We want to just take this moment to come humbly into your presence, praying for you to bless us now as we just uh, end this little time and go back into our world. Go with us, we pray, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Go and have a wonderful day and may you be especially blessed as you go out into it.